Today's topic is essential tools that every writer should be using. So if you've got five minutes, I've got five tips to help you make better use of them. When you think about tools of the trade for a writer, what do you immediately think of? For me, the essentials would have to be, of course, a really good computer with a word processing program that's appropriate and a really good connection to the internet for research. But that's not all you need. Those are the basics, the basics that everyone needs these days. But your computer and your writing program aren't really enough. There are several other tools that I think are essential for every writer and you're probably using some of them, but maybe I can give you some ideas in how to use them better. Now, before I get to my five tools and five tips, let's review what a tool actually is. I love to start with definitions, so let's have a look at it and make sure we're talking about the same thing. This is the original definition of a tool, a handheld device that aids in accomplishing a task. Now, of course, that isn't really what we're talking about, is it? We're not talking about handheld devices, but we are talking about tasks. So here's another definition. Something used in performing an operation or necessary in the practice of a vocation or a profession. So this one is closer to what we're talking about. So I'm suggesting to you that your tools are all of the physical gear that you use to accomplish your writing. And we're not talking about things that become crutches. That's different. That's why I wanted to talk about the definition of a tool, not something that you use as a crutch to, to prop up your writing, but tools that you use to produce something. So tool number one is Grammarly or some other kind of powerful editing tool that is used at all phases along the process of your writing. These editing software programs and online tools are extremely powerful and very useful to you, but you must beware. They do not replace editors. Even the most powerful editing program that you have, even if you've paid a lot of money for it, and some of these ones are quite expensive, they're going to miss things. So here's how I use this editing tool. First of all, I use it as what I call a pre-editor. Every day when I sit down to write, I look back at what I wrote the day before, and I keep track of that. And whatever I wrote the day before becomes something that I review before I start writing that particular day. I run Grammarly because I happen to use that particular program and I reread, make some slight editing before I move on to my day's writing. That allows me to clean it up a little bit, but also puts me in the mindset for where I am as I proceed. After that, I run the program again at every draft along the way. What's interesting is to note the kinds of things that it picks up and suggests to you as you rework it. Every time you rewrite something, there is the possibility that you're going to add more errors into the manuscript. And so running the program again becomes very useful. Also, as time goes on, you might find some of their suggestions more useful than others. Tool number two and tip number two, OneNote. OneNote electronic notebook is very important to you for keeping track of your research. Now, why am I suggesting this particular one? Well, I'm suggesting it because Microsoft Word, Word as a process, word processing program, is the one that most editors, agents, and publishers are looking for these days. And that means that you are using a particular suite of software. And this is one that comes along with it. So why not use it? And if you don't use this particular type of software suite, and I know most of you probably do, but if you don't, there are other electronic notebooks that you can use for the same purpose. These kind of electronic notebooks allow you to paste in pictures, make notes, paste in text, rearrange pages, rearrange ideas. I use a OneNote notebook for every project to organize my online research. Not just organize it though, to keep track of it so that by the end of the book, if I need to make acknowledgements or I need to make citations, I know exactly where I've gone. For example, if I needed to know 
a particular song by a particular orchestra in a particular year, I would go online and do that research and then I would paste that information into my OneNote notebook. And then if I need to cite that source, I can go back to it later. And I'm talking about nonfiction and fiction. You also need to do research for your fiction. Sometimes you're looking something up, something comes to your mind, you're not writing about it right now, but you may need it in some time down the line in another couple of chapters. If you do your research and you have your notebook, your online notebook well organized, you can paste it in immediately and go back to it when you need it. Number three, a thesaurus always has been always is and always will be one of the most important tools that a writer can have. Oddly, I've heard newbie writers and some snotty, pretentious writers online decrying the use of thesaurus. That if someone uses a thesaurus, they either don't know how to write, they don't know how to choose their own words, or they're just looking for big fancy words when simple words will do. That's such nonsense. The fact is that if you know how to use a thesaurus well and you use it for the right reason, it can be an extraordinarily powerful tool for you as a writer. For example, if you're writing along and you're thinking about something, you're not sure exactly what word to use. Instead of sitting and thinking and mulling it over and losing your train of thought, put down the word that seems most useful, finish writing your sentence, then go back and look at up in a thesaurus. A thesaurus will give you synonyms, but it will also give you things that are not exactly the same thing. They're, they mean similar things. And oftentimes when you look at that list, the exact word that you're looking for is on that list. So we're not using a thesaurus to try to find a bigger, fancier word for a smaller word. You're using one to find the best word. I use the thesaurus that's built into Microsoft Word because you can use it as you go along and it's easy and quick. Sometimes I will use an online thesaurus if I'm looking up something more complicated. But I have to tell you that I still own an old tattered copy of Roger's Pocket Thesaurus. I don't really refer to that one very much anymore, but if you still have one and you still use it, go for it because it's going to do the exact same thing for you. Tip number four. Every writer needs a paper journal or two or three and an appropriate writing implement. Even in this digital world, there's something to be said for the process of handwriting. There's something different about the way you think about things when it goes sort of from your head and out the end of your arm and onto a piece of paper. One of my favorite writing gurus that I've mentioned a number of times before is Natalie Goldberg and her fundamental bit of advice for every writer is to keep your hand moving and to use long hand for writing practice. And obviously, if you're going to do that, you're going to need a really nice paper journal and you're going to need a pen, a pencil, something that you like to work with that flows well for you. And it might take you a while to find that. I actually use in addition to my OneNote notebook that I mentioned earlier, a paper notebook for every individual project that I have on the go. And in addition to that, I will have a larger notebook for larger ideas that I write down and keep track of and go back to from time to time. And they are a treasure trove of ideas, not only for new projects, but for adding on to projects that you're already working on. And I also always have a lot of small little notebooks that I take with me for various things. When I travel, for example, I take a medium-sized notebook and a small notebook that I can carry with me all the time and make notes on things. And sometimes those are things that will make their way into a piece of writing sometime in the future. Not that I know where it's gonna go when I write it down, but it might go somewhere someday. Tip number five. Every writer needs a paper calendar in addition to an electronic one. Now this may seem kind of strange to you, but this is a tip I have for you. This is what I would suggest. When I retired from university teaching, I tried to give up my paper daytimer, a daytimer book, that leather bound book that I'd had for years. And for a whole year I went without it and I really missed it. How do you use a paper one? Well, this is what I do. Remember I mentioned earlier that every day I use Grammarly or my grammar checker to check my previous day's 
writing. Well, how do I know what I wrote the day before? I know because I wrote down the word count that I ended up at and I also wrote down the page numbers of the pages that I wrote the day before. So all I have to do is go back to my paper calendar and see where I was and go back to that page to begin. It's also kind of interesting to then look back at this paper calendar after you've finished a project and to see how productive you were and how your writing worked itself out. What days of the week worked best for you? Which days did you write more? When were you more inspired? It helps you to understand your own writing process. The other thing I use it for, of course, is to keep track of online shopping. But that's just me. So those are my essential tools and those are my tips for using them. I hope your writing goes well this week. Talk to you soon. Subscribe to Write, Fix, Repeat. And maybe I can help you improve your writing knowledge and skills. Five tips at a time.